this is saying about uh, Charlemagne and God. Charlemagne. Damn, that shit's squeaky. Back in the day, something going on with me and Joe. Yo, act, pop up. Nigga, I'm on the show with Joe. Let's do it. Bring it. I got to do it. I had a podcast now for two years. Yo, Charlemagne, when you free, what? <laughs> Keep it a big with y'all niggas. I don't care. So that's why when Joe invites me, I always go. Because when I invite Joe, he always comes. When Vlad invites me, I go. You know why? It's loyalty. When Vlad invites, when I invite Vlad, he comes. So it, 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 somebody say I care. Of course I care. Because I look at all these niggas. Of course I care. Don't take nothing I'm saying that I don't care. I'm telling y'all the truth. Uh, I see man. Charlemagne with a hater that he signed, but I can't get him on my podcast. I've been begging him for like a year. Whenever you free, bro. Whenever. I've been on Andrew Schultz twice. I ain't gonna lie. I get why Charlemagne got the got the got the loon nigga on. Why this keep popping up? I don't need this keep popping up. I get why I get why Charlemagne got the loon guy on his platform. You brought him up to the Breakfast Club too. Like he literally. He brought him to the Breakfast Club to be, not an interview because nobody knows who the fuck he is, but to be a guest host, right? So he's giving him the rollout. You sign the Black Effect. I want to promote you. I put you on the Breakfast Club. And then I sit down with this loon guy, and I proceed to do an hour and 50-minute interview. And I watched the whole interview. I watched the entire interview between Loon and Charlamagne. And that was just part one. So Charlamagne gave him, like, three hours of time. And I guess I could see... Like people may think it's like some petty shit, right? Like, why is academics mad? Like, why you really mad about Charlemagne? I want to do a podcast with you. But I guess when you look at it and you see, like, okay, I do this for you, I do this for you, I always big you up. When niggas try to tear you down, because let's be honest, when that whole shit was going down with Charlemagne, a lot of people's apprehension of Charlemagne and thinking Charlemagne did what he was accused of doing, and y'all know what I'm talking about. Being vague, I've done plenty of videos on it though. All sparks from that interview with academics. When he says, I was this age and this was this happened, and everybody like, nigga, you're lying. Academics never really brought no shit like that up. He could have. He could have jumped into the shit with people, but he never even talked about it. Anybody else, I think he would have talked about it. So you got a nigga like that who you respect, you put him on this level, you constantly big him up over and over and over again. And Charlamagne even said in the interview with Loon, like, I always hit up academics, like, to ask him what his deal's like. What, what's your deal like? Oh, you got to deal with Rumble. What's that, what's that deal look like? Oh, you got to deal with Spotify. What that deal look like? It start to feel like you just, you, you, you got me around for a certain, that's how it looks. So if I'm academics, and I'm one of the biggest entities in hip-hop, regardless if you like academics or not, he is one of the biggest entities in hip-hop. And I can get Vlad, I can get Adam, I can get Joe, I can get on with Gilly. Well, Gilly and Wild never been on his podcast. He been on their podcast, so that's another thing. But why I can't get you? But the moment I see you sit down with somebody, it's a nigga that can't stop shitting on me. He shit on academics, on brilliant idiots. He shit on them on his podcast with him. So I can see why a guy like academics would be upset about that. Lydia says, Loon, have a good podcast. I did watch the majority of the interview with Charlamagne the God. I have to finish. I mean, I, I never watched any other Loon content except for when he's talked about uh, the academic shit, which has been as of recently. And it's not a bad podcast. Like, they're talking about shit. But when I listen to the niggas like that, it's like they're giving game, but I also don't feel like they're, they're giving game because they're, they're talking about shit like the internet is nothing. Like they, and I, I just, and I'll just play it. I'll, I'll, I'll play a little bit of it just so you can see. I do like what Ak has built, and I think that- there's What has he built? This is what I can't never get an answer for. I think he's built a name. That ain't shit. No, no, I'll tell you why it is because- So many celebrities are broke. That is true, but he's not. Because not he, yet. Because, <laughs> because he's been able to take that name and, and go get a check from Spotify. And, and I can give it- it's so, it's so weird, like I said, it's always so weird, like, when you got to defend academics, because it's like, it, like when, I, when you hear a lot of the old niggas speak about academics, and not even just necessarily him, it's anybody that's on the internet, they will discredit the internet completely like the internet isn't shit. And the weird thing about Charlemagne for me is, he kind of flipped on his stance at one. Like, I remember he used to be like, the radio don't mean nothing, they don't need the radio, but now it's like, oh, the radio is a real thing. You need the traditional outlets. Like, I'm trying to figure out where that switch happened to go back to, oh, no, you need the radio. You need those traditional settings. You need this thing. But to say academics only built a name, 
And what they're saying is he don't own none of the shit his platforms on, right? He doesn't own Instagram. He doesn't own YouTube. So he hasn't essentially created anything, which to me is so weird because you you hear these niggas will big up other people. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, a nigga will say, academics don't have this, this, and this, but then they'll big up Kai Sinet. And all Kai Sinet has is a stream that he doesn't own. He Like, Twitch owns that, essentially, because Twitch get banned, and we've seen them get banned plenty of times. So, like I said, with hip-hop media, it's picking and choosing. And I'm going to be honest with you, when it comes to academics, it's what you see a lot of times in life. Whenever people see somebody who they, does, they don't believe deserve whatever they have, they're going to be they're going to be mad about it. And they're going to figure out ways to s- systematically try to tear you down by pulling at this, pulling at that. Oh, well, he just has a name. He doesn't have an actual platform. But then a guy like Loon will be like, "What platform does Loon have?" And he'll say, "Oh, I have a subscription model with Patreon." Nigga, Patreon deletes people all the time. Patreon gets rid of people all the time. So it's just weird that we like we pick and choose with these things. And they'll be like, "Oh, well, he hasn't built shit." I was like, bro, what, what, is, what have you built? This man has five mil on Instagram, a mil on here, a mil on, I just don't understand the critique. Because having a Patreon, to me, is no different than having a YouTube with memberships. Because everything you do on Patreon, when you put shit behind a paywall, I can do the same thing with memberships. DJ Vlad does that with memberships. If you don't want to watch a million clips of DJ Vlad, you can pay $5, and you watch a full interview as soon as it comes out. You don't got to wait a million clips to see a full interview. So, to say that you built something because you have it on Patreon, when we've seen Patreon delete people at any at, at will, that doesn't make sense. The only niggas that have truly built shit with their brands would be people who have an actual, like their own entities. And the only people in hip hop I could think of that have done that, I can't even think of nobody that's built their own entity outside of posting on YouTube, posting whatever, or relying on a contract from another company. Anybody who's truly self reliant. And getting their own ads. And, I, and, I, and, and I, I could be misinformed, but the only thing I could think of is, like, the white people that do shit like that, right? They think about a Ben Shapiro, and you think of, like, a Daily Wire. Yes, they're on YouTube, but they have their own subscription platform. They don't have, like, a Patreon and it's Daily Wire. Like, no, the Daily Wire is its own thing where you got to pay to get on there. So it's just weird. I don't know if it's hate. Like, I don't even like the word hate. I told you I don't like the word hate. I don't like the word hate, but it just feels like that. I'll tell you why the Spotify deal was slick. Because he didn't have no he, podcast. He didn't have no history. No podcast resume at all. It's not like this is what he's listen. This is what he's been able to do. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm saying. He's the, the greatest trick ever in hip hop media. He's been able to finesse bags out of nothing. Because in well, my it's, opinion, it's, it's, not, it's nothing, noise. I don't say nothing. Nothing is too cl- It could, could come off like it's nothing happening. So there's something happening, but it's noise, not value. And I could tell you what I call that. I don't, I'm like, I don't be asking about the like, Tell me about that deal you just yeah, signed, young man. That's what I'm saying. You know what I, mean? I, want, I, want, I, want, I want to know yeah. what happened. Tell me about the Rumble yeah. situation. Like, I, I need to know those plays. Because, t- yo, all right, so what's up with Spotify? You but know, let's I, get back to the building the name because I okay. really want to see what people are getting from this young brother. What has he done? I really don't understand. And tell me if I'm not receiving it, right? Mm-hmm. And be like, Loon, I, I literally laid it out. You're just not receiving what I'm for saying. Me, for me, when I was, because uh, I've been knowing Act for like 13 years now. Right. You know what I mean, I, I knew Act when he was going to, I think, Rutgers. Yes. I, that, that, that's the thing I'm confused about because we're kind of media shit like, you sit next to Charlemagne the God, right? And it's like, What's the difference rather than Charlemagne's on the radio than academics? He do news. He do donkey today. He interview niggas. Like, what, what is the true difference? I think the true difference for a lot of these people is they're backed by major institutions. I think that's the true difference. Like, that's like saying, what the fuck is Joe Rogan? Like, my thing is, like, why do you respect Joe Rogan? The difference between Joe Rogan and academics is the audience size. But how the audience got there, there's no difference. You look at Joe Rogan as this huge entity because the numbers are just so massive, you can't deny it. But Joe Rogan doesn't have his own Joe Rogan thing where if, if he got canceled off Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, and then Spotify don't receive, he doesn't have that thing. He can probably make it most likely, but he doesn't have it. So it's just weird, these criticisms that are going off about academics which triggered on any nigga that's just on the internet who's trying to build a name for themselves. Who are you to look down when you're doing the same thing and your only rebuttal is, oh, I'm funneling niggas to Patreon. Nigga, Patreon can take you down at any time. Patreon isn't your entity. 
So like I said, that's when I go back to, and I don't like using the word hating because hate is thrown around so loosely. You critique a nigga and they say it's hating. But if the argument just makes no sense, I can see why people might say you're hating on somebody. Because like I said, I could be on YouTube and I can do memberships. Like if y'all want to, y'all could buy a membership right now if you guys wanted to. If, if so, I don't got nothing for y'all to like do for being a member. But like you could do that and I could just kill every live stream and only live stream behind the membership wall. That's no different than me only live streaming on Patreon. So it just does, it doesn't make any sense, man. And I, like I, said, I get academic, I got like academics frustration because it feels like you're bringing people on, they're throwing like little pot shots at me, you're kind of giggling with them. You're defending me in like a slight way, but then you're also diminishing the impact of the internet and things of that nature, claiming that you built something, y'all have something solid and solidified and I don't. And it doesn't make sense because at this point too, it's like if I get a contract for Rumble or I get a contract for Spotify where I get upfront money and I'm getting paid to do this, What's the difference from me than you being on the radio and you getting a contract from the radio? Like, if, if Rumble's going to give me $100,000 a year and the radio's going to give you, I'm sure he's getting millions, but let's just say he's giving you $100,000 a year. This is a platform we both are able to be on. They're both promoting us. They could both fire us at any time and then we won't have our own, truly our own platforms. What is the difference? Except for this is on the internet. And the internet is where the content is most likely living. Most people probably don't even listen to the Breakfast Club or consume it on the radio. They consume it through YouTube, clips, Spotify, uh, whatever. So it's kind of like an antiquated model. It's there. You're on there. That's your that's your megaphone. You have our media just spend millions and millions of dollars. But let's be honest. Most people consume the Breakfast Club through tr- the the new media outlets. The academics, No Jumper, Vlad, Joe, but they're all on these things. So it's just weird because, like I said, if, if Charlemagne was to get fired today from the Breakfast Club, where would he go? What what, what would be his? Where, where would he go? He could go on YouTube and be successful. I've been saying this all the time. I was like, I don't understand why he doesn't go and be like the culturally relevant Joe Rogan. He could do that. He could sit down with a motherfucker every day. He live in New York. People run through there all the time, have an interview with him, have fun, laugh, good time, and be his own entity. He could do that. But he wants to do the corporate thing, which is nothing wrong with that. But it's just weird when they say we built these things, we built these things, we built these things. What have you built? When everybody who's built these quote unquote things can all be taken away from them. At like, like that. There could be a mass boycott against Charlemagne God. That's so powerful that it breaks the contract. It, it, like it, it could happen, and he would have to shuffle around to try at least for vocally get himself back out there. The brilliant idiots lives on YouTube, lives on podcast apps, just like any other thing anybody else does. So when I look at these people with this content superiority, we own things like nobody truly owns any of the fucking shit they do. Everybody's reliant on these apps: Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Rumble, Kick, Twitch. Like everybody. So I, that's that's why I, that's why I get confused in these arguments, especially with a guy like Loon, who's like, he has fifteen thousand subs. He has more subs than me. That's cool. He's on with Charlemagne now, so he's obviously has some type of connections. But all your platform stuff lives on every platform everybody else has. So there's no difference in you within him. And you say you create value. When I look at your podcast, you have interviews with people. You got a little baby. You got a couple people on there. But then when you're on your solo shit, you're talking about all the shit we're talking about. You're talking about, like, you have videos on your channel. You ain't talking about shit no differently than we are. You got videos of academics. You got videos talking about the no jumper breakup. Like, what what, 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 are, you, what are you doing that's so bad? You giving niggas game about how to do a podcast? Hey, guys, you want to start a podcast? I'll give you game. This is what you do. You can get Adobe Audition. You can get a, a, a mic from anywhere from Amazon. You can record it. You can edit it on the Adobe Edition. You upload it to Spotify. I mean, you upload it to SoundCloud. You take the RSS feed, you put it in Spotify, you put it in Apple Music. Now your po- podcast is now on Spotify, is on Apple Music. Or you can go to Anchor. Anchor will distribute it everywhere for you. Like, that's not game. That shit niggas could just Google real quickly. But, like, my point in that is, like, this content, I make great content. You niggas make microwave content. They got an interview with Chapler Ross. Like, he looked dumb in the interview. He got Rory Amal, like, Joe Budden podcast beef. It's like, I don't know who the fuck this is. I don't know who Money Mook is. You got a clip with a uh, salute. That's good. That's good. Dr. Umar, that's good. I ain't gonna lie. But like I said, it's like no jumper shit, Joe Budden shit, Joe Budden, Joe Budden, Joe Budden. Like it's all Joe Budden, Joe Budden, Joe Budden. Like I see Joe Budden a million fucking times. And I'm not, I'm not saying nothing's bad about it because I talk about Joe Budden. But my point is like, you're creating all this value, but like, you're talking to the same niggas and having the same conversations everybody else is having with these same people. That's why I don't get it. That's why, like, he could do it. I'm not having no problem with it. But my thing is like trying to put yourself on this content hierarchy above somebody 
when you ain't doing shit but the same shit, and not even to the level that he's doing it. Now, granted, he's been doing it longer than you. But that's like me being like, academics don't talk about shit. This nigga really not whatever. Me and him talk about the same fucking shit. And he so happened to be more consistent in a massive, bigger audience. I mean, this doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, I can see why academics would be mad at a guy like Charlamagne. Like, damn, you ain't never sat down with me. I did the Breakfast Club. I did Brilliant Idiots a couple times. I did Andrew Schultz. Like, you're a man who you, I don't want to say he made Andrew Schultz. Like, he introduced Andrew Schultz, and Andrew Schultz took it, and he went crazy with it. That's on him. But your man, he's been on my podcast. Like, Joe's been on here three times. Vlad been on here twice. Like, Adam been on here twice. Like, these other hip-hop people have been on here. And I'm asking you, a guy who I look up to, a guy who I big up, a guy who I, like, you you, you inspire me to do this. And you always give me the cold shoulder. You always give me the, the whatever. I ain't gonna, this is how I feel about it. This is how I feel. This is how I feel about it. I ain't gonna lie. Because I saw Charlamagne the guy post. And I, I never really see Charlamagne post crowds and shit like that. But I feel like it was like a subtle... Jab after the roots picnic shit. This is me. I could be completely reaching. My arms broke out of reach too damn far. I'm reaching. But when I saw it, I was like, is he throw? Is he like, like you know, like? Let me see. Let me show y'all what a crowd really supposed to look like. Let me show y'all what real motion outside of the internet actually looks like. Like, let me show y'all what it looks like. Let me see. Where, where did he? Did he? Was this a long time ago? This might have been a long time ago. I don't think it's on here. But I just wanted to to see it. If I can find it, I don't think I can be able to find it because I don't feel like scrolling to the bottom of this damn thing to find. But regardless, he posted his. Uh, is this right here? Yeah, here it is. So his shit was obviously crazy. Like academics and shit wasn't like this. So yeah, that, that that's pretty much that's pretty much it though. That, that's all I got for that. Let me see what y'all talking about. Um. Not the singles had with the Pink Floyd. The singles had the Rockets, nigga. What you mean the singles? Um, I got introduced through him listening to Poor Minds. Don't listen to him on a regular, but depending on the guest, well, Charlemagne is a comfortable media slave. I wouldn't even say that because, like, if you start in something and you're gonna get millions of dollars for doing it, like, nigga, I'm, like, if it's easy, that's easy. I ain't gotta, I don't gotta do nothing but make millions of dollars. I'm gonna take making the millions of dollars every time. And I like this is the thing about me and your idols too, like. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> now, I'm being transparent here. Because I like doing this shit. This shit's fun, right? I'm just, I don't feel like I've been as consistent as I am in whatever. Like that. I, I, but wherever I'm at in this, in this landscape of YouTube, media, whatever, I, I put that all on me. I've been, doing shit, I've been doing shit since like 2014, but I just haven't been consistent. I fall off sometimes. Like I stop doing shit and I repost and I stop and I do whatever. When I saw that the Breakfast Club was breaking up last year, I was like, damn. I'm like, damn. Because I, 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 like, being on Breakfast Club is like a big deal. Like, I got, you can't see the nigga, but, like, Charlemagne is, like, one of the people, like, Charlemagne is the reason that I wanted to do shit like this. And he's probably the reason a lot of people, probably my age, wanted to do shit like this. Right? I got, like, Joe Budden. I got Joe Budden, Joey Diaz, Charlemagne, <laughs> Alex Jones, Rush Limbaugh, and Joe Rogan. Like, these people are just, like, to me, regardless if you agree with the niggas or not, these are, like, the greatest of all time podcasts, radio, like I said. How to create and generate audiences. These are like the the people who are like the models of how to do it. I know niggas don't like what all these niggas got to say. You might say Rush Limbaugh's racist, Alex Jones is fucking, whatever. I don't give a fuck. These are the niggas that be able to create a mass audience. And these people, I'm like, I got to look and see how niggas did that. But like I was saying, imagine meeting a nigga that you done looked up to your whole life. And they just don't fuck with you. They give you the cold shoulder. They do whatever. That's how I feel like academics feels right now. So, you know. Charlamagne is downplaying Ack and other hip hop media guys' success because he is he isn't interested in hip hop anymore. Ack started a political show just to spite him. Um, I feel like everybody should do that. This is this, this is what I try to do with my channel. I don't like I like talking about rap and shit like that because it's interesting to me. It's fun. Like those are the like the more spirited debate type things that we can talk about. But I like talking about real shit. Like Trail said, the mom and the son. Like I already have that lined up to talk about. Like we talk about the Russia, we talk about Russia shit, we talk about the submarine, we talk about like I talk about I got some gay shit on here I gotta talk about. Not like, you know, like some trans, like some crazy trans guy shit. Like you should talk about everything, especially in 2023 when it ain't just rap, especially when rap is just so I'ma say uninteresting. Like I said yesterday, like the most like the biggest topics of rap have been trials and snitches. Like it doesn't even mean the music, it's been trials and snitches. Was YSL trial, Y and W Melly's trial, Y and Lucci trial, uh, Tory Lane's trial, and then who's the snitch? Who's the new snitch of the week? Like that's the biggest 
Like, who the fuck? Nigga might be 30 years old. They don't, they don't give a fuck about who's a snitch and who's... Do, I don't give a fuck about shit like that. I got kids. I care about real shit going on in the world. So academics probably should branch out and talk about those things. He, I think he does. But I don't have no problem with that. Like, when you get older, like, like Charlamagne said, when you get 40 years old, like, to talk about, like, hey, gonna snitch, you're gonna look crazy. You're gonna look crazy doing shit like that. You're, this, you're just going to. So, I don't have no problem with that. But the way that he, him and the guy are talking about YouTube creators, like, they're less than, like, they're nothing, like, they haven't built shit. Like, having a Patreon ain't building shit. Just having a podcast ain't building shit. So, I don't know. That, that, that's, uh, people are pretty much saying that the loon guy is Charlemagne's attempt to get another tax stone. But I don't think he gives off tax stone type vibes. I feel like he gives off like, I'm superior to anybody else talking about anything culturally in the landscape because I'm from the hood. Like, they, you, you know there be niggas from the hood that live it, that can't even really articulate what's going on there. And a nigga who ain't from there can maybe articulate it better. They might not have been from there. They can still, like, it's not, like, this thing, too, like, when you talk about street shit, people always tell, like, tell people, like, they'll tell me, like, niggas be in the comments, like, you can't speak on this. Why? Like, what the fuck am I saying wrong about what the fuck y'all niggas doing? Like, it's not hard to see what y'all are doing in the hood. Even when he was talking to Traveler Ross, he told Traveler Ross, Traveler Ross, like, they try to convince you. He's one of those media guys who's from the hood. They try to lie for the rappers. Like, oh, no, they didn't do any of these things. How do you know that? All right, bitch, you want to have that? Not bitch, but, you know, you want to have that outlook? That's cool. That's boring, though. Like, you want to pander to the rappers and be like, the rappers never do anything. They never done any street shit. They're all faking. Like, okay, cool. You got it, bro. That's fun. Maybe go watch that Trevor Ross interview. Like, it's just all hypocritical, dumb. I would never speak about this in front of a white man. And what the fuck are we interviewing for? 